Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay here and welcome back to the channel. So today we're finally reviewing the Tecton lower speakers and this is a speaker that you guys have been asking me about a lot and finally today is the day. Now this is perhaps my favorite speaker in this price category of around 1000 US dollars. And it's a pretty competitive field if you think about it. There's a lot of speakers out there in this price category and it has become exceedingly, exceedingly competitive in this price category with speakers like Magnapan LRS that I love so much, the Triangle Bro 3s, and just from the stuff that I reviewed, it's a very competitive category. But this one by far, I think is the best speaker, at least for me, in this kind of price category. And probably the number one question I get from you guys is, I have about $1,000, which speaker should I buy? And so today, we're gonna to be talking about the speaker that I think is a killer in this kind of price category, at least for me. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure to click that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you're not missing anything. And we'll get right into it. So let's say that 10 years ago, I designed a speaker and continued to improve it within the 10 years. And that is exactly what these speakers are. These speakers were one of the first designs by Eric, the designer behind Tecton Design Speakers. And he continued to improve the design in the 10 years of its making. In fact, he made changes and upgrades to the crossover as the time went by. And as an audiophile and someone who enjoys music, I am so happy and so glad that he continued to improve the design instead of discontinuing it like other companies would. So here we are with a speaker that has been designed 10 years ago, but continued to see improvements within those 10 years. And I personally think that the drivers in this speaker are the highlight of the show. So first off, we have the one inch Audax Gold Dome Tweeter. This is a titanium dome tweeter that has been gold plated. And this tweeter, let me tell you, is a classic. It has been used in many different designs, including many different DIY projects. And I've played around with this specific tweeter multiple times in my DIY journey. And let me tell you, if designed correctly, this tweeter can sound extremely, extremely liquid and smooth like a soft dome tweeter would, but at the same time have a sparkly and airy top end with very good detail retrieval like a metal dome. And we will talk about more of the sound characteristics later on in this video, but let's get to the woofers. Now the woofers are 10 inch Eminescence modified woofers. And these are a modified version from my understanding of the original B102, which is a bass guitar driver in the pro world. And yes, Eminescence is known to be very good manufacturers of speaker drivers for the pro world. And they're just a very good driver manufacturer in general. And perhaps because these are bass guitar drivers, the bass on these speakers sound very natural and can be very, very good. Now these speakers, if you can believe me, can go all the way down to 30 hertz and all the way up to 30 kilohertz. This small tower right here, which to me is just incredible. And of course, it's a paper cone woofer, which again, I mentioned this multiple times, but I'm a big fan of paper woofers. They just sound natural to me. And other than that, 
the speakers are using Dayton audio capacitors and pretty high quality inductors in the crossover mounted inside the speakers, which I cannot show you on camera, not because it's some massive secret, but because it's just impossible to film inside a dark cabinet. And also the crossover is very hard to get to. And other than that, there is two ports in the front of the cabinet. So this is a front ported design. And don't underestimate the Dayton audio capacitors. I've used them in the past myself. They're great capacitors. And I've seen a lot of people have great success with it as well as myself. And yes, yes, there are better capacitors like Clarity or Mundorf. But we're talking about a speaker being manufactured and sold for the $1,000 price category here. In fact, not a lot of manufacturers even bother to use the quality used here in the speakers in this kind of price category. They usually have it modified or custom made from overseas for much cheaper. So here, this is actually a good thing. So overall, the quality of the components are there in the driver and the crossover and in the sonic characteristics as far as I can tell and the time and energy that went into the R&D process of this speaker for the last 20 years or so is what we get today. So how can I not be enthusiastic about this speaker? Please tell me. I am very enthusiastic about this speaker. So what's the catch? There has to be a catch. Well, there is a catch and it's a very simple one. These speakers are in the $1,000 speaker category, which means that while I can vouch that these speakers in terms of a sonic performance and sound characteristics can perform and compete with $5,000 speakers, in terms of its luxury feel and design and craftsmanship, it's just going to be a boxed speaker using standard MDF and which means you're gonna get now the thing is that MDF is perfectly fine 99% of the manufacturers especially in this price category uses MDF and I've used it and a lot of people use it in DIY now to a trained ear and to myself you can probably hear a little bit of boxiness when you hear these speakers now, 99% of the people out there is going to not be able to catch the boxiness of this speaker. In fact, the boxiness can add into the musicality of the speaker design and sound. Now, if you don't believe me, believe it or not, every boxed speaker has a resonance that they have to either fight or play with and integrate into the sound of their speakers. So for example, a high-end audio manufacturer like Wilson Audio fights the resonance with special materials that they find to control for resonances like Material X and so on. While Sonos Faber actually uses those resonances to make their speakers sound more musical and integrated into their system. In this case, to me, it sounds like it's the latter. To me, it sounds like that they have integrated that kind of boxy resonance into the entire sound of the speakers. And to me, it seems seamless. So why in the hell am I describing to you the boxy characteristic of this speaker if you're never going to notice it? Well, that's because I think that is the beauty of the speaker. It is so well integrated into the speaker that the overall natural characteristic of the speaker is so well blended, meaning it's paper woofer and the natural usage of the box resonance have added this characteristic where the bottom end is very full sounding, warm, luscious, yet perfectly paced in my opinion, and not too fast, not too slow, but just about right. And then you have the lower mid-range frequency, which is a tad bit warm and have that kind of full bodied presentation when you listen to male vocals, you get that kind of big, luscious, throaty male voice. And when someone plucks a guitar, it, you feel that kind of vibration, the vibrato of the strings in the body. So 
this is a speaker in this price category that I can 100% say that you feel certain instruments with your body and not just hear them. And that's very rare and I don't think I've ever said that with any speaker in this price category. And when I come to the high frequencies, the high frequencies are so damn refined for the price range, it is almost insane. The thing about the speakers in this kind of tier is that the high frequencies tend to be not as refined. And on this speaker, the high frequencies are just very sweet sounding. It almost reminds me of the high frequencies of the LS35A, while in the lower end, the dynamic and just the punch and the extension reminds me of the JBL speakers I love so much that has that kind of very visceral impact in the bass region. So this speaker to me is a very good blend of two of my favorite speakers, the LS35A and JBL 4311s, while actually extending lower because the JBL 4311s, while being dynamic and punchy, doesn't exactly extend lower. It cuts off around 50 hertz or so. These speakers actually extend down to 30 hertz. So for me, falling in love with these speakers was a no-brainer. It took no time. Now, the reason actually this speaker review took some time, however, is because of the placement. Now, not because these speakers are placement sensitive, because they are not, but they confused me. Because usually speakers sound better in one position than the other. This speaker gives me a entirely different presentation every single time I place them differently. And for the good, actually. And that kind of confused me because I didn't understand what the best placement for these speakers were because they all sounded great in their own way. So let me explain. So when I have these speakers tilted directly at me, I get this sense of beautiful imaging, center imaging, and I get a more transient and detailed presentation from the speakers with very, very good sound stage, in fact. But when I have them tilted out towards the room, now I get this massive 3D holographic sound with decent imaging. Which one do I like more? I don't know. And that was the main problem is that I didn't know. And to make matters more confusing here is that if I had these speakers back closer to the wall, I got very good bass thump and not a bloat, but more deeper extension. So I pushed the boundaries and I put them like right up against the wall and I still got very good bass response without any type of bloat. Now, when I had them out into the room, I found them to be more airy, more spacious, and honestly, I don't know which one I like more. So my recommendation to you is you play around with it. The only thing I will say is that you cannot go wrong placing these speakers, in my opinion. Now, in terms of amplification, it also confused me, which also led me to take longer with the speaker playing around with different amplification. Because when I play them with a cheap amplifier like the Marantz receiver or an SMSL you know, desktop 30 watt per channel amplifier I had lying around, these still sounded really good, kicked ass, really good bass response, but with a little bit of dullness on the top end in comparison to other pairings. But if I never paired it with other things, I would think the high frequencies were just on point. And when I had it hooked up to your higher end components like the Supernate 3 or the Kinky Studio Monoblocks, it just blew me away. The sound field just changed. The high frequencies were more solid and airy and more three dimensional. The bass kicked more faster, more visceral, and you could feel it more with your body. And all these things were present. And then I tried a eight watt audio note, single ended, tube amplifier with it, and you get this beautiful liquid sound that's just very, very easy going. You can hear it for the entire day, not fatiguing at all, smooth, three dimensional, you know, but not as good as imaging with, you know, solid states like the Super Nate 3 or the Kinky Studio monoblocks, but, you know, still beautiful voices coming through the middle. 
So amplification wise, usually I recommend my favorite. With this, I really don't know. Every single one had its you know, beauty to it so much that I really have trouble picking one or the other. So my recommendation is you try it yourself. I, I, I can't pick one. And it's great because this speaker is very sensitive, which means you can drive these speakers with a very low powered amplifier like I did with an eight watt single ended tube amplifier. And these speakers are 98 dB in sensitivity at one meter with an eight ohm load. And now to make matters worse, and more confusing, these speakers respond very well to every component I change in my chain. So for example, when I change my DAC from a Dana Fripps Pontus to a Terminator or Terminator Plus or an SMSL M400, all those changes can be heard very, very pleasantly and I just can't choose which one I like better. To me, it sounds more high-end as I go from a Denafrip Pontus to a Denafrip's Terminator Plus, more detail, more stuff like that. But again, like it, it just it just does too many things well every time I change something that I was like, huh, well, <laughs> what do I say? So my suggestion to you is that have fun. This speaker is a fun speaker. You can really cater the sound to your liking with every change you make in the system. This speaker is very true to what you put in, in my opinion, and can sound very, very fun. It's an extremely fun speaker to have and enjoy. So that's pretty much it for this video. Now I'm going to compare it with other speakers from here on. So if you are interested in the comparisons, you're welcome to stay, but if you're not, you're free to leave. Now, grab a cup of coffee right now because we're about to strap on and compare it to some of the famous speakers that has ever come up on this channel. Now, first of all, I'm not going to compare it to every speaker in this price category. That's not possible. I haven't heard everything in this price category. I just happen to really like these speakers and find it the best in this price category so far, in my opinion. And so we're going to compare it and contrast to multiple different speakers that fit into different applications as you would. So here we go. First up, the LS35A Sound Artist. Now, that speaker is a speaker more meant for near field in my opinion. It sounds good in stereo, but it is not going to compete with a floor stander like the Tecton Lore. There you have it, just not going to. It's not gonna dip down lower, the high frequencies are comparable, but the overall full range response are just more enjoyable in a stereo setting, in my opinion. Now next up, the MagnaPan LRS. Now this is a big one. Now, if you like the MagnaPan sound, like I've always talked about, you have to like the MagnaPan sound. There are people out there that genuinely believe that MagnaPan sounds like shit. And I don't agree but some people generally don't like the sound and that's fine, it's, everyone have a, has a different preference, right? So you have to have heard it yourself. Now the MagnaPan LRS is a little bit deceiving. Well, it was deceiving until I told everyone what it was you know, about, it's the amplification and the uh, room placement. You have to have the speakers about three foot out of the room and you have to have amplification that can drive the speakers properly and have good synergy matching. So, so far, Hegel is a good one. Name is also a good one. Those are not cheap. So you're not looking at a speaker that can be driven by a you know $500 amplifier like these can. You need some good power, good current, and that means money. So you're looking at, like I said, a system under $3,000 or $5,000, um, to get the best out of the MagnaPan LRS. So that's kind of not fair in this kind of comparison, but again, it's an entirely different presentation from these speakers. The MagnaPan LRS, LRS is a more of a venue type speaker. It throws the soundstage and imaging behind the speakers. So it's kind of a little bit more kind of roomy and f farther away. And the bass is not going to be as dynamic. It's not gonna be moving much air as these speakers are. 
and it's not going to give you that visceral impact and physical uh, experience as these speakers would with very good amplification like the Kinkis Studio or the Super Nate 3 that I've tried. Okay, so moving on. So next up is going to be the Triangle Bro 3s and the ELAC debut reference. So I'm gonna try to do all together. So those two speakers are bookshelf speakers or stand mount speakers and they're going to throw a larger sound stage than these are. However, if you pair these up with two amplifiers, there's no question these throw a much, much, much larger sound stage. And if you pair up uh, a better amplifier to these that have that kind of sonic qualities to it to increase that kind of uh, sound field, then of course these will do a better job at it, in my opinion. Um, so what this means is that the Triangle Bro 3s and the ELAC Debut Reference all have a capping point where if you put in better gear, you don't get as much benefit from it than you would if you plug it into these. So these scale better with better gear. And so that is going to be the main point here as well. I find the highs to be more refined on this speaker than either of those. These do dip down lower. Um, in my opinion, and have that kind of more floor standard kind of scale and sound. And that's pretty much it. And last but not the least, comparing it to the Tecton Lore reference speakers that I love so much and gave the best speaker award. Now that speaker is going to be about $250 less than these speakers. And I loved it very much. But the high frequencies, I find these to be more refined and these to be extending lower in the bass region. I would say that depending on your room size and your limitations with the wife approval factor and all that kind of stuff, uh, you may prefer the smaller reference or you may prefer a little bit bigger speaker like the lower. Now, this is very preference based because these speakers I like more because they just give you a more visceral and more bigger scale of sound and give me more of that kind of floor standard experience in this price category than the reference, but the reference does seem to have slightly better imaging and a little bit larger sound stage than these do. Both are very, very good choices, but if it was up to me, again, I would pick the lower because that's just my pre personal preference about that visceral impact and rock and roll sound. And so there you have it. That's my short comparison and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you guys in the future. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to click a like button if this video helped you. And I'll see you guys on the next one.